In this video, we're going to be looking at reciprocal trig functions. So that is the reciprocals of sine, cosine and tangent. And let's start by looking at some definitions. So we're going to define sec x as 1 over cos x. So sec is short for secant. And we also have cosec of x, which is defined as 1 over sine x. Cosec is short for cosecant. And then we have cot x, which is short for cotangent. And we can define this as 1 over tan x. But as tan x is sine over cos x, more commonly we'll define it as cos x over sine x. So you might be thinking, why do we need all of these extra trig functions? Well, it turns out they're going to make some of the trigonometric functions we work with at A level a bit more easy to work with. And we're going to be looking at the graphs of these functions and solving equations with these functions and some identities that link the functions together. Much like in the year one course, we looked at sine squared x plus cos squared x equals 1. So before we look at the graphs of these functions, let's look at a way of remembering which one is which. We can do that by considering the third letter of each of the reciprocal functions. For sec, the third letter is C, and that's 1 over cos. For cosec, the third letter is S, and that's 1 over sine. And for cot, the third letter is T, and that's 1 over tan. So it's actually quite easy to remember which is which, as long as you remember to look at the third letter of each function. So we'll start with the graph of y equals sec x. So remembering that sec x is 1 over cos x, we can start by drawing the graph of cos x. If you're working on the printed sheet, it might be a good idea to pause the video and draw yourself the graph of cosine onto your sheet now. So if we draw cosine, it looks like this. And we can use the graph of cosine to help us sketch the graph for y equals sec x. If we think about the point where x equals 0, so y equals 1 here, and sec x is 1 over cos x, so that will be 1 over 1. Next, if we think about what happens here at x equals pi over 2, cos x is naught, and sec x would therefore be 1 over naught, which is undefined. But as we approach 0, we'd be doing 1 over a very small number, which would give us a very large number, but also a very large positive number. So what we're going to find is that we have an asymptote at pi over 2, and the sec graph starts at 1, and it approaches infinity up here. So it will look like this. We can construct a similar argument for the negative portion of a graph up to minus pi over 2. Again here we're going to have an asymptote because we'll be dividing by 0 and we're going to go from 1 here and it's going to approach infinity as we approach pi over 2. Let's now think about the next section of the graph between pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Again at 3 pi over 2, cosine approaches 0, so sec x is going to be 1 over 0 approaching infinity, so we have another asymptote here. At pi, cos x is negative 1, which means sec x will be 1 over negative 1, which is still negative 1, so we've got a point here on the graph. And if we look to the left of pi, cosine x is approaching 0, but it's negative in this part. So as we approach 0 for cosine, we're going to approach negative infinity for sec. And the same on the other side. We're approaching 0 from the negative side, so we're going to approach negative infinity here. We can construct another very similar argument over here between minus pi over 2 and minus 3 pi over 2. We've got 0 for cosine, which means we'll have another asymptote. Again, the graph is negative here. At minus pi, we're going to get minus 1, and we're going to approach infinity on both sides of that. Finally, to fill it in between 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi, at 2 pi, we should get back to 1 here, and we need to approach positive infinity. And then between minus 3 pi over 2 and minus 2 pi, we're going to be at 1 when we're at minus 2 pi, and we're going to go off to infinity there as well. So this is the graph of sec x. If we just remove cosine from that, we get something that looks like this. Next, we're going to look at the graph of cosec x, which is 1 over sine. Now, as we know, sine and cosine are just translations in the x direction of each other. 
So we should expect cosec to be a translation of sec. So we can construct a very similar argument to the one we just used for sec. We'll start by drawing the graph of y equals sine x on there. You might want to pause the video and make sure you can do that for yourself. So here's the graph of sine x then. And again, we'll have a look at what's going on at the y values of 1 and 0. First of all, when x is 0, sine x is 0. And that means because we're doing 1 over 0, cosec x should approach infinity. When x is pi over 2, sine x is 1, which means cosec x should also be 1. And when x is pi, again, where sine x is 0, so we should have an asymptote there as well. So if we start at x equals pi over 2, we're going to start at 1, and we're going to approach infinity over here. And the same on the other side, starting at 1 and approaching infinity at 0. And we've got a similar thing going on over here on the left-hand side. We've got an asymptote at minus pi. And at minus pi over 2, we're going to be at 1. And we're going to go off to infinity on both sides here. Between pi and 2 pi, same kind of argument. Starting at minus 1 over here, we'll have an asymptote at 2 pi. We're going to go up from negative infinity, reach negative 1, and then come back down to negative infinity again. Between minus pi and 2 pi, the graph's going to come down from positive infinity. It's going to hit at 1 and then go back up to positive infinity at minus 2 pi. And if we then remove the graph of sine x, this is what the graph of cosec looks like on its own. Finally, we'll have a look at the graph of cot x. To start with, we're going to draw the graph of tan x, so you might want to pause the video and have a go at drawing that between minus 2 pi and 2 pi. So here is our graph of tan x. It's going to repeat itself several times between minus 2 pi and 2 pi. First of all, let's think about what happens at key points on the graph. When x is 0, tan x will be 0. So we'd be doing 1 over 0, which is undefined. So we're undefined at x equals 0. We're also undefined at x equals pi, 2 pi, minus pi, and minus 2 pi. So we'll pop some asymptotes in to start off with. Now let's think about what happens as tan x approaches infinity. So at pi over 2, tan x is approaching infinity. We'd be doing 1 over a very large number, which means that cot x will approach 0. Since the graph is positive in this section, we're going to come down from positive infinity and we're going to hit zero here. Then for the next section of the graph, the whole graph is negative in this section. So if we do one over a negative number, we'll still be negative. So we have to come from zero and approach negative infinity. And we're going to have a very similar thing happening for the other sections of the graph as well. Let's do between pi and three pi over two. We're zero here on tan x. So we'll be up at infinity and we'll come down through zero. And then for the next section, we'll go back and we'll approach negative infinity. A very similar thing happening in the negative section of the graph. We'll start here at zero. Graph's negative, so we're at negative infinity. We're going to come up through zero and then keep going up to positive infinity. And the same thing's going to happen between minus pi and minus two pi. Removing the graph of tan x, we're left with this for the graph of cot x. So that's the three graphs of sec x, cosec x and cot x. You don't necessarily have to have memorized them, but you should be able to draw them pretty quickly using the steps that I've just gone through in this video. Okay, I've drawn them quite slowly so I can explain where they come from. The more easily you can recall these graphs, the more effectively you'll be able to use them in other areas of maths. So, for example, if you're working with sec x, it's helpful to know that it's defined at minus 1 and 1, but in between those two values, it's undefined. So if you were solving, say, an equation that said sec x equals 0.5, if you're familiar with the graphs, you instantly know that that equation will have no real solutions. Similarly, with cosec of x, again, you're going to have no real solutions if you were trying to solve an equation such as cosec x equals minus 0.5.